Handheld pixel art also doesn't look like you remember. I made a video saying modern day pixel art with high contrast colors and large blocky designs didn't really exist back when pixel art was at its height back, you know, in the NES and SNES. This may be the visual data, but this is what it actually looked like. Everything was supposed to look rounded and muted. The pixels were not supposed to be emphasized. And a lot of people said, hey, wait, what about handhelds? Handhelds like the GBA had an LCD screen instead of a CRT, so they must have had the high contrast blocky pixel sprites, right? Apologies to this and many other commenters, but nope. Here we have Metroid Zero Mission. Everyone remembers Metroid Zero Mission, right? We remember the big, bright yellows and blues of the alien world. Oh, wait. You see, the Game Boy Advance LCD screen had limitations in terms of its color spectrum. Add to that that the original didn't have any method of lighting, and this high contrast picture turns into this muted picture, and because of that muted low contrast, things blend together a little bit more. This looks a little bit more like curved reliefs in stone, more so than this does. Samus 2 doesn't have heavy outlines around her that emphasize her pixels. So when she's shown in GBA True Color, she looks a lot more muted, a lot more metallic, and a lot rounder. Now, Metroid is supposed to be muted. It's supposed to be dark and isolating. What about a bright game like Mario Kart Super Circuit? Well, you could still get that bright aesthetic and still get the muted rounding effect from the limitations of the GBA's original LCD screen. This lower contrast makes everything look a little bit more rounder and a little bit more like toys, which is what they were going for. Designers for handheld games knew the handheld's limitations and made those limitations work for them. Many people went as far back as the Game Boy Color. Here we have Shantae. This is the actual visual data. But this is it in true color. Everything being muted makes it a little rounder. And just for fun, here's Pokemon Yellow in the visual data. And here's it with a true color filter. And that looks a little bit more like Pikachu's actual color palette rather than neon eye bleed Pikachu here. This holds true for other handhelds as well. The original Game Boy had refresh rate issues, so frames would bleed into each other. The Game Gear had the same thing. And these limitations were used to enhance the art, to hide their pixely nature, and make them look more like a drawing come to life. And while the Game Boy Advance did eventually get the Game Boy Advance SP, which had front-mounted lighting, that lighting was also taken into account after that console was released. Finally, I had people claim that Azure Striker Gunvolt was trying to mimic the style of sprite art on the DS. And I hate to break it to you, but that's already modern sprite art. The DS came out in 2004. The PlayStation 2 was the home console of choice back then. The internet and emulators were commonplace, and we were already falsely remembering this as this. So the style of DS sprite art was already based on a false nostalgia for a style of sprite art that never existed.